When I first became a programmer, I was really lucky because I, at my first job, had people around me who were very talented software developers and people who had a lot of experience in the field and people who I admired and respected and still, even to this day, want to be like. And what was really interesting is as they were mentoring me and helping me to come along, I was able to observe them and see like, okay, what are the behaviors that they do that I can adopt as well to be a better programmer? And so in this video, what I wanted to share with you are the seven habits of successful programmers, not only to be a skilled programmer, right? To have a solid skill set, to be able to produce for a company or clients, but also success in terms of being happy software developers because it's no use to be really skilled at this, but to have a career that you kind of don't really like, which can happen as a software developer. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. The first habit that almost all successful developers who I've seen have is that they're constantly training their ability to focus. And this may go without saying, uh, being able to focus on one thing singularly, right? Like just blocking out everything else, having complete tunnel vision and focusing on one single thing for a long period of time is the key to being a programmer because some of the problems you'll run into, some of the things that you have to create in terms of solutions or applications for your clients or for your company, take a lot of concentration and just general thinking. And all the successful developers I know have a really strong ability to focus for a long period of time. And you may think that the best developers have a natural talent for this, but almost all the developers I know have some form of ADD, some thing that makes it really hard for them to concentrate. And so what they've had to work on for years is to train their ability to focus on one thing. So whether that means making sure that they are not being distracted, right? Like cutting out all distractions, not having their phone in front of them, following good habits to make sure that they are concentrating and be able to focus. They're also not doing things on a regular basis like multitasking, like trying to split their attention between two things and task switching, going back and forth between two things. Uh, even down to the, like, the things that they do outside of programming. So I've noticed a lot of programmers like to read books because reading books helps to slow down your mind and focus on one thing at a time. So what this means for you is you just wanna make sure that you're constantly improving your ability to focus and you're not doing things that are gonna take away from that skill. The second habit that I see a lot of successful developers do is that they're always trying to automate things. So what this means is that a lot of the work you're gonna do as a programmer is very tedious. Right? So for example, when I'm building a backend application in C-sharp, let's say, one of the things that is very tedious is setting up a test class. So say I'm trying to test something, a class that I've just created. Well, that can be a bit of a process. It can take two or three minutes, which doesn't seem like that much, but if I'm creating five to 10 tests every single day, that time definitely adds up because there's a couple things I have to do. I have to create the test file, I have to decide where that file lives in the file structure, then I have to create a test setup, a test cleanup, and then I have to write each test. If I can turn all those things into a click of a button, running a script, it makes my life a whole lot easier. So as a software developer, one of the things that I've just noticed amongst the best is that if there's anything that's annoying them, if there's anything that's draining them of their energy, any task that is very rote and they do quite a lot of, they'll think of ways to automate that because the time that they're not spending on something complicated, something that drains their energy, is time they can spend on something they like or something that they enjoy or just even thinking about some other part or something else that they wanna do. So the point from this is, is that as you proceed with your career, you always wanna be thinking about how to automate things so there are not so many rote and tedious tasks in your life. Now, before we go any further here, let me just stop briefly and ask if you haven't already, make sure to go down and smash the like button as it will help me to share this video with lots of other people on YouTube. And if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, what are you waiting for? Go down there, smash the subscribe button. Also make sure to hit the bell icon so you get notifications anytime I put out a new video. The third habit of so many successful developers I know is that they are constantly practicing being pragmatic. So what I mean by that is that basically as a developer, one of the problems that you'll run into, especially early on in your career, is that you probably will over-engineer things. You are probably gonna spend a lot of time on things that don't really matter. Like for example, big thing that you wanna think about as a software developer is efficiency, right? You wanna make sure that your code you're writing is efficient. And many people will spend days or weeks working on some code to make it as efficient as possible, or they're trying to make it as readable as possible. But the problem is that as far as the business is concerned, maybe they don't care about efficiency. Maybe 
the part of your code that you're writing won't be used that often. So efficiency doesn't really matter. So what I found from many of the best developers I know is they always step back and try to look at the bigger picture, right? So is the problem that they're trying to solve, is it really necessary to think about? Um, one thing that people often get down a rabbit hole with is refactoring, right? So they spend so much time refactoring their code without realizing that sometimes just good enough is good enough. And just to get the code out there is much better. And this is super important from a business perspective because businesses are really short on time, if you've ever noticed, right? They're competing with other companies. So for them to get code out is really important. Now, yes, you should put out the best code that you possibly can. You should make it as efficient as you possibly can, but always step back and ask, does this need to be done? Do I need to make this efficient or am I spending more time in this than I need to? The fourth habit that I see from many successful developers is that they are always teaching and helping others. I think the reason that this is so important is because you will get better at this. You will get to a point where you have very high confidence in yourself and your abilities. You'll feel like pretty much anything somebody can throw at you, you can figure out how to work through, how to solve that problem. But what's gonna happen is, is you're gonna have what's called unconscious competence, meaning you're gonna be really good at what you do, but you can't really necessarily explain to other people in simple terms how you did it or what you did. And this is really important because I truly believe that if you don't know how to explain something in very simple terms to someone else about what you're doing, then you're good at what you do, but you're not as good, you're not reaching your potential because you really wanna know the ins and outs of everything. So one of the benefits of helping others, so if it's somebody who is a junior developer, or maybe it's somebody who is just not nearly as good as you and you have a higher skill set then, is obviously the satisfaction that comes from that. That's great, I love it, I do it as well, it's very satisfying. But the other reason is because in order for you to explain something to someone else, you have to really know it on a deep level, meaning you have to sort of really refine your mental models around how things work. You have to go deep on it and you have to be able to communicate and explain that to others. And when you do that, you get a lot better. You obviously get the satisfaction of helping others. So just make sure as you proceed here in your career, you're finding people who you can teach and mentor. It could just be one person on the side. Say you have a friend who wants to do this, who you help, or it could be maybe you're going to pick up some junior developers at work who you're gonna help through. But either way, it will help you a lot in the long term. The fifth habit of successful developers is that they are open-minded to things. So what that means is that the challenge for you as you progress in your career is you're gonna work with frameworks, technologies, programming languages, and you're gonna to start to build up preferences for them. You're gonna to start to think like, this is the best framework, this is the best programming language, because you're so used to it. The problem is that if you start to wall yourself off from other programming languages, from other frameworks, from other just ideas in general, and you start to get just really stuck in your ways, you're likely or more likely at least to sort of fall behind because the field is constantly changing. It's constantly growing and it's constantly moving forward. And so if you're not at least open to ideas, there's a chance either you're gonna get left behind or you're just not gonna stay on the cutting edge. So one of my favorite quotes is from the book Tool of Titans by Tim Ferriss where he's interviewing Mark Andreessen. One of the things he says he likes to do is, or at least the way he likes to think of the way he thinks, is that he has strong opinions loosely held. So you can be opinionated. You can think that there is you know, a certain paradigm for coding or certain design pattern is the best in certain situations, but be willing and open to listening to others. Because if you're willing and open to listening to others and you're able to communicate why you think one way is best versus another, it will help you to formulate better thoughts. It will help you to be a better critical thinker and it will ultimately make you a better programmer because at least if you decide that this is the way it's supposed to be, you'll have a good reasoning behind that. So be open-minded, be willing to listen to others, and I think you're gonna have a much more fruitful career. The sixth habit that I've noticed amongst many of the successful developers that I know is that they crave a lot of discussion and even feedback. And this is really important because as you get better, like I said, you're gonna have confidence, but you're also gonna know that there's still a lot that you don't know. And it's key to make sure that you're talking with others. So if you have ideas that you wanna share with them or get feedback on, make sure to do that. If that's you know, best practices, design patterns, again, programming languages or frameworks that you think are the best, talk with other people about that, like constantly get in discussions. I remember at my first job, one of the best parts about it was that we always had these organic discussions. Somebody would just stand up and be like, hey guys, what do you think about this? And we all sort of talk about it. I'd state my opinions, I'd get feedback, we'd kind of go back and forth, or even you'd have to state your case about why you thought something was better than another. So I think that that's really important. Even getting feedback is important, even as a good developer, because you wanna get feedback from others. Are you writing code that is effective, is efficient, is also readable, 
maintainable that you can add on to. And I think that's something as a good developer, you're always gonna wanna do till the end of time. The seventh and final habit that I find is common amongst all the successful developers I know is that they're always following their interests. So let me kind of break this down a little bit for you. As a developer, one of the challenges you'll have after the first year, two years, or three years of being a software developer is to keep yourself motivated and interested to continue to grow. Because you'll find that after you get your first job, after some time that you get really good and that you just are not really as challenged and your excitement to learn new things, to expand and grow just isn't really there. So what you have to do is really dive into things that interest you. So maybe you're a front end developer, but you start to learn a little bit about say cryptography and you're like, I actually kind of want to learn more about that. Dive into it fully. Dive into it fully because what I found and what I've seen is that when you dive into things that interest you, it sparks that flame that you originally started with when you first started to learn to code and you can really have a lot of energy to use to learn that thing that's gonna help you even as a front-end developer. Or say you're a back-end developer and you really just wanna work for a blockchain company. Like go do it, like go at least maybe try to build your own blockchain or contribute to some sort of blockchain or contribute to a company who does work with blockchain technologies because again, that's gonna keep you locked in, it's gonna keep you excited, it's gonna keep you motivated. The worst thing you could do is just be a developer, be really good at what you do, and then sort of like when things that interest you come by, you're just like, ah, oh, well, I'm a front end developer, so I can never do that. Like go all in on it because again, I've noticed with myself and others is that it helps to keep you fresh and ultimately it helps to keep you happy over the length of your career. Alrighty, so those are the seven habits of successful developers. I hope that you have genuinely enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely go down and leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts. Make sure to hit the like button. Other than that, if you're interested, I've created a free PDF, the Self-Taught Programmer Study Manual. It's free to download. I will leave a link in the description. It has a lot of study tips that I've condensed from my years of being a mentor and coach. So definitely jump on that. But uh, other than that, that's all I've got. So thank you so much as always for watching and peace out everybody.